up, beautiful people, lovers of good things, lovers of good wind all over the globe. I bring greetings from a grateful heart. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on your time zone. Thank you so dearly for always supporting this platform. I really do appreciate it. In case you are hearing our voice for the first time, or you are coming across us for the first time, we still remain your one and only progress news, giving it to you back to back. Remember, in this platform, we react to our videos, and your opinion is highly needed. So sit back, watch this video, and... Our farmland, our women, now they are talking about bringing security to the express high, uh, to the highway. You know, it is all fake and lies. And that's why we are going to come hard on the governors from now on going forward. Because if the government who sponsored terrorism and who sponsored terrorists give the military uniform cannot protect Abuja and Kaduna Highway, is it the Southeast that they hate so much that they're going to bring security to protect? Is it the Southeast that they want to annihilate? that they are going to bring a security that will protect your highway? The answer is no. We think far. They hate Biafra and the Southeast with passion. And if anybody is telling you now that what they are bringing to the, uh, to the expressway or the, to the highway in the Southeast is anything security, my brother, you don't know Nigeria. You need to, you need to open your eyes. What, they are, what the Southeast governors are trying to do is to also lock the highway against the Eastern Security Network activities because we are about to confront the criminals and the terrorists who actually have surrendered our forest. Those people you see that are coming small, small in Nsuka, somewhere in Nsuka to kidnap, they are just coming to do that. There are many of them in the forest. Yet, the governors see that these kidnappers are kidnapping our people just before military checkpoint. In every military checkpoint, one kilometer away, that is where the kidnapping business is taking place. And it is an arrangement between the military and the Fulani terrorists, which some of the military are part of them. So we are making it very clear to the governors that this particular exercise that they want to embark on will definitely bring a very, very big rot of Biafra. It is going to be a face-off between them and the Biafra people. Because the kidnapping will increase, because we know the people that are making, have, you know, committing this uh, kidnapping uh, are the security agents. So, but if what I am saying now makes sense, it means that you have to be part of this particular revolution against them. Because Abuja and Kaduna Expressway is a very good example. That is the only place that should set example for others to follow. The capital city of Nigeria. The capital of Nigeria is Abuja. Abuja is not protected. And it is the Southeast. They want to bring military to protect you. The answer is no. I want everybody to open their eyes and their ear. Abuja people are running away. And the, the Southeast governors who are women. A woman is better than women. I say women, I, women forgive me. The Southeast governors are idiots. Complete idiot, all of them, from A to Z. People that cannot talk, you know, when their people are being persecuted and they call themselves leaders, they are complete idiot. And believe me, we don't have one single respect for them. And so therefore, as we are fighting for our freedom, they are against our freedom. So we have made them, or they made themselves our enemy and we are going to start handling them as such. And you people, we are, you are going to hear, you are going to see it. It is no longer, we know they talk again. It is a woto woto language. You governors of the Southeast, you have declared war against your people. Because Nigeria has collapsed. The security architecture in Nigeria has collapsed. The only hope we have is the Eastern Security Network and other Biafra armed agitators who take it upon themselves to fight against terrorists that are invading our land. And all you do is to bring Fulani terrorists also to kill them, to suppress the particular security we are going, trying to give our people. We are not looking face of any governor. I want you people to understand that this particular statement coming from this man is a sham. Uh, Church was uh, and uh, released after
after payment of ransom. And, uh, the SSG of Enugu uh, also suffered in the hands of these people. So what we are trying to do is to make sure we have more boots around to ensure that um, we, we will patrol all the major highways. But beyond that, there is a committee, as I speak, working on uh, all our border communities. Because what we need is that somebody crime in Abia and just move over to Imo and become a gentleman. And vice versa, somebody can commit a crime in Ebony and move into Abia and become a gentleman. So we want You see, and you can understand where they are going. Tell this governor that the people committing the crime don't have boundary. The people committing the crime are people we call nomadic. So I don't understand from which investigation that this man is talking about somebody committing crime in, uh, in, in Enugu and we go to Ebony and become a, a gentleman. I don't know the kind of crime that this man is talking about that uh, this somebody will commit in Anambra and will go to Imo and become a gentleman. I do not understand the crime he's talking about. But if he is talking about the crime of this terrorism and the kidnapping in Biafra highways, like the Anon or Rampage in Onsoka area. Is that the same crime this man is talking about? If it's the same crime the man is talking about, then he don't deserve to be even a clerk. He don't deserve to be a secretary. He is not qualified. Because if he qualified to be anything, not to talk of being a chief security officer of the state, he will understand that the people that are on in the highway kidnapping doesn't have any state in Nigeria. They don't belong to any state. And they are not gentlemen. Both in the forest, both on the road, both in the market where they go to buy whatever they eat, and in any way they are, they can never and there has never been gentlemen. So if you, watch, if you watch and listen to this particular statement from this man, you find out that the target is still the Eastern Security Network. Is a Fulani a gentleman? Have you seen any Fulani in the highway shooting God and kidnapping and after that he come to Obausa and become a gentleman? It's a simple sense I'm making here. I want you people to understand what these governors are thinking. How they are thinking. And that is why they, since now, from this particular thing they have done so far, it is now clear that they are the enemy of Biafra and we are going to fight them. I am telling you we are going to fight the governors from A to Z. They will never sleep again. I am telling you, in their various state, they will never sleep again until further notice. Because it is a direct declaration of war. And we are entering revolution. Revolution will swallow all of them. Except if they are not in the in the southeast. Believe me, they must be in the southeast. We will capture all of them one day. All of them, red-handed, we capture them. And they are going to pay for the killings in our land. Look at what this man is saying. That somebody will commit crime in Anambra and we go to Imo and become a gentleman. Who, who is he referring to? Is he referring to a Fulani? Is he referring to the terrorists that are in the bush that will come and become a gentleman? No. All these things you see, they are referring to Biafras who they have no evidence of their criminality. They are referring to Eastern Security Network. They are, they are referring to other pro-Biafra group. They are not referring to the criminals. They are not referring to the people that America are raising alarm. They are not referring to the people that Britain are raising alarm. They are not referring to the people that Abuja is deserted because of them. No, they are referring to Biafras. Because it is only Biafra that can move from one state to another and can continue to be a gentleman anywhere he or she you know, anywhere he goes. It's only Biafra. So are you telling me that what this man is talking about, the highway and those who commit crime and go to another state, that he was actually talking about eliminating the terrorist Fulanese? The answer is no. The answer is no. So I want you to watch. want to that um, our border communities are equally sensitized and we can uh, actually monitor and apprehend these hoodlums. Because such synergy will ensure that there is no 
there will be no hiding place uh, for any of them all. I want to reinforce what was uh, said by the chairman of our forum that um, ESN was not a creation of a uh, status quo. And uh, that extent, we don't determine the operation, the architecture, and um, the uh, modus operandi of that outfit. So it will be difficult for us to um, rely solely on what ESN is doing. Yes. Do you hear that? It is difficult to rely solely on what ESN is doing. They recognize that ESN is doing a fantastic job. But you know, they have to kill them to please Fulanese. Even against their own wish. What this man have said here have revealed a lot of things again. You know, I told you people that what we are doing this evening is to analyze their, their statement, analyze what is in their mind, bring out what how they think, and you are going to know it. So what this man said here is that ESN is doing something, but they cannot rely on what ESN is doing. They cannot rely solely on what ESN is doing because they don't know their modus operandi and they don't know the architecture or whatever, you know. So, but so for that reason, they cannot just trust solely on ESN. So they have come to realize that ESN is doing a fantastic job, but they have to also kill them against their own wish to please the Fulanese. I am telling you, you see, what he said here, what he said here is not a lie. He said they cannot rely on ESN alone, which means they also rely on ESN. But at the same time, they have to kill ESN to please Fulani against their own will. Because if they don't do it, they are going to have a face-off with the Fulanese and all their wealth will go. So what you see them having today is what we call blood money. If you do not know the definition of blood money, the entire governor of the Southeast are now living on blood money. The blood money is that when the ESN have done nothing wrong, other than the protection of the people because of the failed state, governors will continue to milk Nigeria by eliminating many Eastern Security Network to prove to the Fulanese that they are loyal to the government. Like Omahe, Omahe will open his mouth. He will say, I swear an oath to protect Nigeria constitution. Omahe swear oath to protect Nigeria constitution. The same Omahe listening to how the Supreme Court gave a judgment exonerating Mazina and the Kanu, discharging Mazina and the Kanu. Yet, Omahe did not come to defend that constitution. Is it not a constitution? Omahe was bragging on the video. Everybody watched the video where he said, I was elected and I swore on oath to defend the constitution. Is the Supreme Court decision not part of the Constitution Omahi is supposed to defend? But did Omahi come to give statement on that particular ruling? The answer is no. Omahi only came, or after all of them, after they have cooked their thing with the Fulanese and the elephant grow wing as they fly. That was when someone courage to come and start talking about political solution. My word. That brings us to the end of this beautiful update. Do where to like this video, share and subscribe. The best thing for you to do is to join this family by smashing on that red subscribe button that says subscribe and turn on the bell icon for more latest updates. See you when I see you. From me to you, I say bye.